They have released all the evidence on the Ruby Frankie case, and it is crazy. It is crazy. And there's been a lot of big questions that people just haven't had the answers to, like, where is the husband? What was going on? What house were they? They were at Jody Hildebrandt's house, which is this big 10,000 square foot, like, mansion, basically. How did they act when they were being interrogated? They got, like, the videos and everything, because if you remember Ruby Frankie in her her court case, she was like, oh, I want to thank everyone. Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, I'm crying. But spoilers, during all this evidence that, that we've, I've kind of like watched through them a little bit, nobody mentions the kids. Not, wow. Not, like, I don't, I don't, I didn't see the dad mention the kids. Maybe he does. Maybe I missed it. Jo, uh, Jody never, never worries about like, oh, what's going to happen to the kids? No, they're just freaking crazy. It must make, you know what? They've taken my ears off for this video. I can't be wearing cat ears. It's this freaking serious one. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the evidence and, and show it with you and talk about it. And uh, yeah, it's 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 nuts. And just for a quick catch up, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, Ruby Frankie was a mother on YouTube. She, Eight Passengers was the the channel name, but it's been it's been shut down for a while now. I don't remember how many kids she has in total. They got they got a lot of kids. And uh, she fell in with Jody Hildebrandt, who was like a life coach and basically like a like a cult leader. Uh, and they started doing very odd and weird punishments to their kids. And it kind of got more intense to the point to where the kids were being tied to beds and, and made to do like just just crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, but they called her. She's in jail. She's serving I mean, four consecutive yeah, four consecutive sentences, a uh, maximum of 15 years. But uh, apparently in the state that she's arrested in, she can only serve a maximum of like 30, period. But anyway. That's crazy. Yeah. So the first clip, they have they have the ring, uh, the ring footage of when the, the boy who escaped out the window goes to a neighbor's house and rings the doorbell. Hi, I was just wondering if you could do two favors. So he walks up and asks for them to take him to a police station and he won't tell the neighbor. He just has his personal business uh, to where they come out and they give, they give him food and they give him water. And uh, the elderly man here calls the police and is like, look, they send somebody out here. He can obviously see he's got tape on him. He's been bound and he hasn't been fed. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's something, something, something serious is going on. He's emaciated. He's got tape around his legs. He's hungry and he's thirsty. This kid has obviously been, he's obviously covered in wounds. All right, we need the cops here as soon as possible. So they call in the cops wow. and um, of course they, they give, they send, they give him medical, they show up and they, they make sure he's all right, which he's, he's been through it. But uh, as, as far as I'm aware now, the kids are still with the state and their dad okay. is actively trying to get custody back from them. But we'll go over more of the dad uh, later on, but that's kind of where they are now. And they show up to the house. Police officers, open up! And they, this is, like I said, it's this big, massive 10,000 square foot house with like this huge door. Look at this door, dude. I don't wow. know what Jody was doing, but man, I mean, well, she was a life coach and a therapist, but she is apparently making freaking bank. Jody, I need you to step uh, out. I have, I have my turn. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out of the house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Step out, lady. We're not asking. We're telling you. She has her attorney on the phone? Yeah, she's already got She's already got her attorney on the phone. She must have walked and, and saw that the kid wasn't there? Well, like, so whenever like, the guy bangs on the door and some time passes, like, it kind of cuts. And, like, uh, in a house like this, she's got cameras all over the place, right? And she knows they're coming. Right, yeah. She saw them pull up a while ago. <laughs> she's back. like, let me, oh, let me go ahead and call. I know why they're here. Let me go ahead and call my attorney. Oh, man. You know, preempt. <laughs> I don't know. It's it screams guilt to me, you know. But uh, exactly, she she did she pled guilty anyway in the court case. Uh, so like we like she, they said, yeah, I did it. But yeah, at this time, she's like she's lawyering up before they get her. Just have a seat right there for me. Do you have a search warrant? Taser, taser, please. <laughs> With these kids involved, I kind of like that these guys are like. Listen, lady, we'll tell you, we'll figure it out here in a minute. Just sit down and shut up. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, they're like, <laughs> get out of the way. We want to save these kids. They're hard. They're you know, like you see this in other situations, like the context, right? Like they're they're doing the hard nosed cop thing to where we'd be like, oh, her rights and everything. But in this case, screw her rights. Those, yeah, save those kids. Save them, kids. But that's not the only information RF shared with authorities. 
He said he believes two of his siblings are still trapped inside the home. And I like, I am not a law. I'm not a professionalist at all. Like if, if they find like a kid who's been obviously abused and he's like, I came from this house and my bro, my, my siblings are inside the house at that point. You have to go. Do they got to wait for a search warrant from a judge or they got to like, you know, expedite one or are they just going in or, or what? I don't know what, what happens in that case. I don't, not too sure what happened here. It doesn't really say, but they, they go in the house. Oh, I bet, I bet they get a phone call. Just get a, get an approval of, for that one real quick. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. Like, okay. Yeah. Get in there. And you go in here to the bathroom and there is a little girl in the closet, her head shaved and she's sitting there and she won't, she won't speak to anyone. She, she doesn't say anything. Hey, you okay? Is it just you in here? I'm Sergeant Tobler. What's your name? So yeah, they try, they ask her her name. She just, she doesn't really say, she, she does respond. They ask her if she's hungry and she does respond to that. Um, and they bring, a, they bring the, the female medic in here to, to, to speak to her. There's nothing I know you want to talk about at all. It's okay to talk to me. Are you scared? She ultimately walked out with the emergency responders and was later rushed to the hospital. Yeah, so she finally came out. They, they talked her out, and uh, they go through the rest of the house. So they find um, they find a safe room, which is literally like a massive safe, and they go into it, and it, it's 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 like a panic room. It's like kind of like a super tiny. I wouldn't call it an apartment, but you know, it's just, it's got a bed, it's got a uh, toilet, all that stuff in there. But what they also find is they find handcuffs and rope in a drawer in this room. Wow. So which would definitely lead you to believe that they would lock kids in here and yeah, have time down. Wow. So they have this mixture here they found. It's honey and cayenne pepper. And apparently they put that on the wounds and then put it under plastic. That's sickening, dude. Yeah, it's like, let me put some pepper into your wound, you know? 30, dude, cayenne pepper? Oh my gosh, that 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 burns so bad on its own. You know what I mean? I can't even I can't even eat it. You know, you know, mayonnaise is a little spicy to me. Just... <laughs> and then putting this on on open wounds, dude. I don't know if there's a hell hot enough for mm. somebody for these two women, man. That's crazy. That's yeah. Man. Well, that's not all they find. They look around the house and they find there's there's duct tape all over the place, and and there's, they find rope in like all the rooms. Just that there's gauze. There's like there's like medical stuff like if to I guess treat the wounds that they're causing. Um, Jeez. The, in one of the rooms, there's like a one of those little kitty. Um, uh, what do you call this thing? Trampoline. Yeah, and uh, apparently this is like what they used and made the kids jump on them for hours at a time and would like put them outside and make them jump out there. So as the cops are searching the place, Ruby Frankie shows up and she comes in the house and s just sits down. Like, like nothing's going on. She just sits down, doesn't, doesn't ask about the kids, just sits down. And she's like, we're going to go into this too, but she's like creepily like stoic the entire time. Like no facial expressions. She barely speaks to the point that the officer asks her, like, are you okay? Do you need like medical attention? Or yeah, you know, she just, she won't answer any, she just shows up, sits down. They put her in the cuffs and, uh, and ship her off. I don't even know where she came from, like how far she had to drive to get here, because like the the story is a little I'm a little confused on. At one point, they moved in uh, with with Jody. OK. And the kids were there. So I don't know if like Ruby's like actively living with her now or if or where she was during this time. But yeah, anyway, she shows up, sits on the couch. So they they take her to jail and they sit her down and they talk to her to where it just kind of continues to be weird. Only saying one thing. She'll wait for a lawyer. The only thing she ever says, she'll wait for a lawyer. The, entire, the rest of the time, she just like stares at him. Doesn't respond to like any questions. I'm like, like, are you okay? Or do you need to go to the bathroom? Nothing. She just looks at him. Literally will not say anything. Do you want to talk to me about where you live or how many kids you have? It's just kind of like this dry eye blink she keeps doing. And then that, it goes on for like a while too. Like they, they try to ask her a lot of questions. She just refuses. Hey, she want to let you know what your, what criminal charges for. So you're under arrest. It's going to be two counts, second degree felony of child abuse or neglect. Okay. Do you understand that or no? Are you okay? 
<laughs> I'm wondering if there's like a medical clearance that needs to like do. Do you need medical attention before you go to the jail? <laughs> She okay. she finally she finally says no after he's just like are you are you there hello <laughs> hello <laughs> these aren't incriminating yeah. questions I'm just letting you know what's going on here um, apparently they uh, she even has like a diary she keeps it, it kind of gets into like the culty stuff but like uh, she's even got dates of when stuff happened like uh, are they 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 they're hiding the kids' identities, but uh, it's like R refuses to do wall sits and says he's done. And then, uh, you know, R, I guess, is that a, a, a day later is to stay outside, sleep outside, only come in the bathroom and shower. Like 7 14 23. E refuses to work, screams, has hair shaved off. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Like, the, the, she even wanted, she wrote this stuff down. He slithers and sneaks around looking for opportunities when no one is watching. Then he scurries like the way they just like explain them. It's so psychotic, man. So yeah, she's not saying anything. She's got a freaking journal. Then they like, they interrogate Hildebrandt, which she talks a lot more during hers. And she's seems very like, I, she says stuff like, I don't know if you're going to you know, use my, flip my words, use them against me. And like, kind of does like the, the thing that we've seen a lot in this case of her thinking that everyone's out to misinform and like spin her truth around on her. As if they need to. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys seem nice people. Yeah. Why not mm -hmm. hide anything? That can be difficult. This is really yeah, she's not trying to hide anything. Just the, the abused kids in her side of her house with all the torture yeah. <laughs> crap they have going on. Literally, she has hidden in the bathroom closet. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, and they they have like they have phone calls to where like um Refrank calls uh she apparently messaged her husband at some point during that and uh so he comes down and they interview him so you know everybody's like where's the dad at where has he been this whole time and no one even seems to be concerned about the kids very much he kind of sticks this his story to where he hasn't been around like he says that they separated in like sometime in twenty two. And he's been gone and he hasn't seen the kids in over a year. Uh, the last time he saw Ruby is when he came to sign over uh, a car that she drives. And he's just staying at a house. And the this initial interview he has, he's just very like, oh, what's what's happening? Oh, my gosh. That's this is news to me. That's crazy. I had no, yeah. no clue. Literally no idea. Uh, and he even like they ask him about Jody, uh, who was a life coach and all that for them. And he's like. Oh uh, yeah, I respect her, and she's the life coach. No, 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 no. And then later on, there's phone calls uh, that that the with well, the interviews that weren't filmed, but they the the audio was recorded to where he just he just throws uh, Jody under the bus. He's like, "This lady was crazy. She's manipulated my family." Yeah, wasn't there possessions involved? Yeah, yeah. He talks he talks about how she would have visions and possessions, and he would have to go like calm her down. And to the point to where like Ruby, Ruby wanted to move in with her so they could like help her. It's like a whole super culty thing. And it got like, like a, that like supernatural edge to it at that point to what she's saying. She's like having uh, like visions of Jesus and all this stuff. It was weird and I hated it. And I became the resident exorcist. Yeah, so he he just hated it, and he, it kind of comes to uh, the conclusion I can draw from it is I mean, well, actually, not even the conclusion I can come from. But what they say is that they separated because of Ruby's like obsession with Jody, and and Jody like kicked him out of the group basically, so like alienated Ruby. I, I don't know. It's like it's like almost this weird them like kind of working together. I don't know if they had like a conversation off the side that hasn't been shared or something, but they're both like on the exact same page, which is convenient that they're just trying to blame everything that Ruby did to her kids on Jody. Right. It's like, it's such, it sounds like a weird scapegoat kind of thing. Like, Oh, well, you know, she manipulated, she did this, she did that. Like whatever you did. And, and so like, he goes and he cries, he's like even cries in the interview a little bit. And he's like, Oh, you know, I love my wife so much. I trust her. No, 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 no. It's, it's just, yeah. it's weird. Everybody involved in this is, is weird and something's wrong with all of them. At the very least. At the very least. <laughs> At the very least, I'd say they need therapy, but don't go to know who Hildebrandt plays. That's all I know. It's yeah, Jody. Ugh. That's the sad part. Is she started off as the family therapist, 
And that is something that I think every family member in this family is going to need for a while. <laughs> some, yeah. some good therapy. <laughs> God. You know what I mean? With, but how do you trust how do you trust another therapist again after this? You know yeah. what I mean? Well, Honestly. Like, leave, leave leave the religious stuff out of it. You know, just you you don't you don't have these problems because of God and you need to get more God. You you got some problems because you just got some problems you need to work out. But yeah, like I said earlier, the, the kids are with the state, and at the time of this recording, apparently he's still he's fighting to try to get custody back of his kids. But I, I think they're probably investigating like his absence, his convenient absence during all this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the catch up on the evidence, and uh, like there's more to it. You can you can look into it and like kind of get more of like little nuances and stuff. But we covered the main things, and that's the end of this video. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it or hated it and hate Ruby just as much as I do. Like thirty years isn't enough. Throw her away. Same thing with Jody. Throw him away. Cayenne peppers in their wounds, please. <laughs> Thanks for your birthday. Happy birthday. Touch my friends. Love you. See you next time. Bye-bye.